This is the new M3 MacBook Pro, and if you're using it with the default settings, you're missing out because with some easy changes, you can not only make your MacBook Pro look better, but you can also make it more productive and easier to use with my 15 first things to do when setting up your new MacBook Pro. All right, one of the first things you might wanna change is resolution. Now, yes, if you're getting a new 14 inch MacBook Pro, it's likely you're upgrading from an older Intel 13 inch MacBook Pro, or maybe uh, you are upgrading from an old M1 or M2 touch bar MacBook Pro. So, you know, at first you're probably like, well, I got a nice big 14 inch display. Do I really need more screen real estate? And sometimes the answer is yes. So to get even more screen real estate on your 14 inch model, all you have to do is click on the Apple logo in the top left. Remember that we're gonna be going here a lot and then uh, click on system settings. Then from here, scroll down and then click on displays. And then you're gonna see some options here. So this is the default resolution as we have it right now, but there's actually an option for more space. So when you click on more space, you're gonna notice that the app window shrink, your app icon shrink, uh, the text shrink, all that stuff kind of condenses down. But what that means is that you can actually fit more windows and more app icons on your display. So even though you really can't change like the physical screen size of your MacBook, if you need more display space to work with, well, this is kind of like a little hack uh, to get you more display space while kind of keeping the same screen size. Uh, after we do this though, there's other settings you're probably gonna wanna change in your display. Now, this is a MacBook Pro, which means that you're probably working with some like professional color tools. If you're like a video editor or a photographer or something like that, or, you know, maybe you just want like better colors out of this display and maybe you're thinking it looks a little too warm. Well, that's because by default, these displays ship with Apple's True Tone feature. And because I'm a video editor, I kind of like to turn that off. So to do this, just go over into control center in the top right, click on this and then uh, you're gonna click on this display area right here, and then you're gonna see some options pop up. So you can see there's dark mode, night shift, and true tone. So turn off true tone. You're gonna notice it got a lot cooler because it's no longer reacting to the ambient light temperature in the room. Now, the next thing you're probably gonna wanna change is your wallpaper. Now, by default, this is the Mac OS Sonoma wallpaper. Uh, when you buy your new 14-inch MacBook Pro, this is probably the wallpaper that comes with it. Now, you know, maybe there's um, that black wallpaper that you see in all the advertising with, the, the MacBook Pro box has this wallpaper on it. Maybe you want that, right? So to do that, just go back to system settings. Let's scroll down to wallpaper. And then um, there's a lot of options here that I'm gonna show you. So uh, by default, you can see like, there's the Sonoma wallpaper, Ventura, Monterey, and then you have like all these new options for landscape, cityscape, underwater. You're probably like, where is this wallpaper that's literally on the MacBook Pro box? Well, if you scroll all the way down to pictures, and this is really weird, right? You gotta scroll pretty far uh, until you get to the Pro Black in the pictures. When you select that, that's gonna change the wallpaper to the one that ships on the box. But maybe you don't want that one, right? It's, it is a little kind of drab and boring. I know it's like the new wallpaper, but one of the things I really like with Mac OS Sonoma are these new animated wallpapers uh, where basically Apple takes like a drone and like does like these like really nice drone shots of like uh, different cityscapes or different landscapes. And there's a lot over here. Now, most of them do require a download. So I'm gonna click on the Redwoods over here and you're gonna see that there's actually like a little download uh, progress bar over here. So these are pretty large. So I don't know how many of them you wanna store, but you can find your favorites and then you can pick from there. So let's go ahead and pick the Sonoma Horizon. The ships by default uh, with Mac OS and you can notice, yeah, it changed to um, this nice Sonoma wallpaper. And then I'm gonna click it over to the California's Tembler range. I hope I said that right. And you're gonna notice it changes there. Now, you're probably going like, oh, what's the big deal? It's just some like default landscapes on the wallpaper. Well, the big deal is now when we go and lock our screen, you're gonna see this animate out. Look how nice this looks. The, remember I was talking about the drone shots? The drone shots are going overhead. They're recording all this you're getting like a really nice animated wallpaper in Mac OS Sonoma. And what I really like is this additional touch. When I go to log in, it keeps moving and then slowly comes to a pause. So I think that's really cool. I think it's a, a nice distinct visual feature in Mac OS Sonoma. The next setting you're gonna wanna change is the ability to activate hot corners. Now by default with Mac OS, uh, you can actually use this feature without changing anything. So if you drag your mouse pointer to the bottom right, you're gonna see a quick note window pop up. That's kind of what Hot Corners does. It's an ability to access quick actions by just taking your mouse and dragging it to the corner of the screen. And obviously you have four corners to work with. So you can kind of 
pick different settings and map them to those corners. So to do this, all you have to do is go to desktop and dock, scroll all the way down, and then click on this button for hot corners. When you click on this, you're gonna see all the corners of the display pop up. As I said before, you have quick note on the bottom right. If you wanna change that, you can. Uh, we're gonna leave it for now. But then, uh, you know, for the top right, uh, we can do launch pad. Uh, for the top left, we can do lock screen. And then for the bottom left, we can set that to start our screensaver. So now when I uh, drag my mouse cursor to the bottom left, you're gonna see it starts a screensaver. If I pull, pull it out and go to the top left, well, there we go. We just activate the lock screen. Now I got to enter my password to get back in. So that's a really cool thing if you want to quickly lock your Mac. Uh, and then if you drag to the top right, you'll activate Launchpad, bring up all your apps. So Hot Corners, uh, this is a really nice feature. It's a very cool power user feature and you can access uh, these settings very quickly. Okay, next you're going to want to change settings that have to do with how fast the display turns off. Uh, so to do this, just go over to lock screen. And by default, like if you're using your Mac and you don't touch anything for two minutes, it automatically like locks the screen, which I don't like. Like it'll start the screensaver and it'll like dim the display. I, I think that's way too quick. So what I like to do is set this for a longer time. I usually like to set it for like 20 minutes because I feel like, you know, um, I can pretty much control when I put my Mac to sleep. I don't need it to automatically do it. And then if I do forget, I feel like 20 minutes is a good amount of time where it's like, okay, if I'm not using the computer for 20 minutes, chances are I'm not gonna be on it for a little while. So I like to change that as well. And you can actually have different settings for this uh, for when you're on the power adapter or when you're on battery life. So you can set that uh, basically how you want. Uh, then another thing I like to change is to show the clock when you have the screensaver active. So if you go over to the screensaver, You'll notice you get that nice uh, moving, you know, dynamic wallpaper, but there's no information on here. So I like to see the date and time. So when you go uh, to show large clock, you can see it's activated on the lock screen. Change that to on screen saver and lock screen. And now when we go back to our screen saver, you'll see that the date and time are right there. I think that looks really nice. Uh, and then another thing you might want to change is to show a message when the screen is locked. So this is kind of like a fun little feature. Uh, you go over to show when message is locked, just toggle this right here, and then you can set a custom message. So uh, I guess for our custom message, we're just going to say, don't you dare unlock Greg's MacBook. Hit OK. And then when we go to the lock screen, you're going to see there's a message right there, a little custom one. Don't you dare unlock Greg's MacBook because something bad might happen to you. Okay, I promise we'll be out of the settings really quick, but there's one last thing you need to change here, and that is the trackpad settings. So to do this, just scroll down to trackpad, click on trackpad, and you're gonna see some options here that you might wanna change. Now, one thing I think a lot of Windows users like to change is to change the right click. So by default to right click, you click the trackpad with two fingers, and that brings up the right click, right? Uh, but I think a lot of Windows users are used to clicking the bottom right corner. So you can change that, click bottom right corner. When you click the bottom right corner, then you get the right click. When you click the left corner, then you get left click, right? So you can change that. I personally like the two fingers. I've gotten used to it from using Mac OS. So I'm gonna keep it like that. But I know a lot of Windows users, that's something they might wanna change. Um, something I think everyone should change though is the more gestures. So go click on more gestures. And there's a lot of different gestures that you can uh, learn over here. But the one I really like to tell people to turn on is App Expose. So you're gonna see there's two different options for this. You can either swipe down with three fingers or four fingers. I like to do it with three fingers. And now let me show you how that works. All right, so how this feature works is when you have a lot of windows open, you can kind of like quickly organize them and then select the one you want. So you can see I have a bunch of Safari windows open. I'm gonna take my three fingers, swipe down on the trackpad, and you're gonna see they kind of organize. So you, I can see there's the Mac Rumors page, 9 to 5 Mac, Apple, and The Verge. And then you can select there and they come to the front. So App Expose is a really quick way to kind of like organize all those cluttered windows and then kind of present them in a really nice and neat space. Okay, we're done with all the boring settings. Let's do some more fun things like customizing our desktop for our 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now, one of the first things you wanna do is take advantage of the new widgets feature in Mac OS Sonoma because you can now place widgets directly on the desktop. So to do this, uh, you go to the top right, click on the date and time, and you'll see there's a bunch of widgets here. Now before, uh, these widgets were just regulated to this area, like you couldn't move them out of here, but now you can. Now, and the easiest way to do that is to scroll down. You'll see this edit widgets button, click on that. You'll see all the widgets pop up. And you know, if you go over here and hit the uh, plus sign, you're gonna see that it adds them to that default widget area. But if you just drag and drop them, you could just place them directly on the desktop. So you could do this for 
all the widgets that are in here. So we'll take the reminders and you even can uh, access some of your iPhone widgets. So there's some widgets in here that are only available on my iPhone, but uh, Apple can actually pull those in and now bring those over uh, to the Mac. So that's cool if you have some widgets that you like to use on your iPhone, but there's no Mac app available for it. Well, you can actually use them on the Mac too. So that's really cool. And basically you can just kind of customize these widgets and it really does make the desktop look um, really nice. I like it. Now, let's say you want like even more customization for like a certain aesthetic of your widgets. You might want to download like a third party app like Widgetsmith. It is paid. Uh, I believe it's like $3 a month to like edit these widgets, uh, but you can basically customize your own widgets. So this is an app I downloaded from the app store. Let's click on Widgetsmith and you can see, right? You have like all these different size widgets that you can edit. Let's add a medium widget. Uh, and then you can see there's like a ton of different options over here. Uh, let's just do the astronomy one. That looks pretty cool. And then you can go over here and you can like set the different colors. Uh, you can set the location. You could set like the time format as well. Uh, and then basically as you go through this, there's just a lot of different customizations over here and you can just get like so many different options with uh, different fonts and different layouts for these widgets. So I'm not gonna go through and do a whole customization guide on this because uh, you know, then that would take forever, but yeah. Oh, these look really, really nice. So let's go ahead and save that. And what was that one? That was a medium one. We're gonna tap on that, click over there, and you can see there's our custom widget. Again, not gonna customize the whole screen, but you can kind of see, it looks nice. Uh, and you can certainly create like your own little theme or aesthetic going on on the 14-inch uh, MacBook Pro's desktop. All right, now obviously your desktop probably isn't just gonna be widgets, right? Like if you're like me, you probably have a lot of things on the desktop. This is actually a more cleaned up version than how my desktop usually looks. Another thing I should point out, right? If you drag widgets, it'll automatically arrange uh, around your desktop icons so you can kind of fit them. And look at that, that's kind of cool. So you can neatly organize uh, your desktop icons. But uh, one thing you're gonna wanna do to kind of fit this aesthetic we got going on over here is to change your folder icons. And this is really simple. All you have to do is right click on the folder then just go ahead and click on get info. Then you're gonna see there's like a folder icon right here on the top left. All you have to do is take a picture. Uh, if you use like a transparent PNG, it's gonna look a little bit better. So let's take this uh, Apple logo. Let's drag it over to the folder icon. You're gonna see that plus icon, right? Just release and it changes it right there. And you have a custom folder icon. So this is a Greg's Gadgets folder, right? We got it properly, uh, decked out with the Apple logo. If we click on that, you're gonna see it's a folder, right? So you can just drag in certain things over here. And yeah, that's a folder. So now when I go into the Greg's Gadgets folder, all my Greg's Gadgets stuff is gonna open up. And obviously you're gonna wanna customize that yourself so you can get uh, a certain aesthetic with these nice folders and these nice widgets. But my desktop's still looking pretty messy, right? And uh, normally I have like a lot of screenshots and other things going on. And yeah, it's it's like a pain to organize. I hate organizing things. I, I'm really disorganized. So this next feature I absolutely love, and that is the ability to quickly organize everything by using stacks. You should definitely be using stacks. Uh, so to do this, just go on the desktop, then click on view, uh, scroll down, you're gonna see this option called use stacks. Hit use stacks. And look at that, everything is neatly organized. And it takes like different categories too. So if you have like a bunch of images, it's gonna put them all into this area. You click on images, all your images pop up, right? Uh, if you go over and click on movies, then all your movies are gonna pop up. And then you can even group stacks after that. So just right click on the desktop and you can uh, group stacks by the kind, the date last open, date added, uh, and then you can even create like custom tags if you're organized. But I think this feature is better for people who aren't organized because you can let uh, your Mac organize everything for you. So let's go to date last open and then it's gonna organize everything uh, by the last time we open the date. So yeah, definitely uh, check out Stacks if you're disorganized like me. It, it can actually make you appear organized without you having to do any work. And I like that. But there are times where maybe you don't wanna see anything on your desktop. Like maybe it's really cluttered and you want like a clean desktop uh, to like kind of like, you know, free your mind from all the clutter. I get that, right? So I like to hide desktop icons and I use this app called Hidden Me. Uh, so basically to do that, just go to the app store. Let's go over to search over here and type in Hidden Me. And you can see I've already downloaded it, right? Like I use this app all the time. So we're gonna click download, hit open. And you're gonna see right here, this new icon, right? It's got a nice little arrow pointing to it. And basically, if you wanna get rid of all your desktop icons, I know they're nicely grouped, but sometimes it's more cluttered. Basically, you just hit on this 
hit hide desktop icons and all of your desktop icons vanish into the background. Now, don't worry, they're still there, right? You click on hidden me again, hit show desktop icons and they pop right back up. Don't worry, they weren't deleted or anything like that. Just a nice way to organize and clean up uh, your Mac OS desktop. In fact, uh, when I'm using like an older Mac with all my stuff on it and I have to do a screen recording for the channel, I always use hidden me because otherwise it's gonna be like, there's like 50,000 screenshots littered all over the display. And it's like, oh my gosh, Greg's uh, very disorganized. I wanna get it clear to you that I am very disorganized. Don't think that this is a smooth operation running this channel. The, the mind behind this channel is not organized and I can't stress that enough. Speaking of organization, uh, window organization is the last thing we're gonna wanna do on our brand new MacBook Pro. Now, by default, right, let's go ahead and open up a Safari window. Let's open up Mac Rumors. We'll give them a shout out. Let's go to nine to five Mac, why not? I, you know, I don't wanna pick favorites, right? So we got two windows open over here. Now, by default, you go over and hover on the screen icon, right? And you can snap this to the left of the screen and you can click on this and it's gonna go to the right of the screen, right? Like if you ever use iPad multitasking, this is what it looks like. You could drag this bar in the middle to resize the windows, but you don't get much flexibility with this option. Uh, so for Mac OS window management, it, it, it's not the best by default, right? But uh, you can download some third-party apps to help you out. The one I like to use is a paid app called Magnet. Uh, so if we go to the App Store, I already have this downloaded, but let's go to the App Store, search for Magnet, and you can see that this is a window snapping tool. Uh, let's open up Magnet. Again, I believe it's $10. I believe there is a free open source app called Rectangle. I haven't had any experience with that. So if you're the type of person that's, you know, $10 is too much for an app on the Mac and you don't want to pay for it, check out Rectangle. I believe it does something similar, but for our purposes, we are using Magnet. And basically, I, I believe I already have it open, uh, Magnet just kind of lets you organize things. So if you click over here in the menu bar, this is the Magnet app icon, and you can kind of see um, all the keyboard shortcuts to like snap these windows into different areas. Now, honestly, I cannot remember all these keyboard shortcuts, especially when I'm like working. It's like, I don't have time to think about, oh, where, how do I snap this window to the left? How do I snap it to the right? But thankfully with Magnet, uh, you can actually just drag the window right over to the right of the screen and it will snap there kind of like how uh, Windows has uh, window management, right? So you can take the Safari window, drag it over here and get that done, right? Uh, and it's pretty powerful too. So it's not only just doing like a split view, like if I drag this to like the corner, it'll just pop up in like this little corner over here and you could drag the other one to the bottom, right? You can kind of see, like you can kind of organize these windows uh, into different areas. So if you want like four apps taking up the four corners of the screen, you can do that. now. You have to be careful, right? Because there are some Mac apps like the podcast app that are uh, technically like iPad apps. So their resizing is kind of like a little limited. So let's drag this to the bottom right corner and you can see it, it can't be more narrow than that. So it kind of like comes over here and encroaches on our other window. So this really works best with like native Mac apps. I believe like the news app is also technically like an iPad app. So if we go over here, drag it to the top left, it can't really snap uh, as well. So the best way to get this to work is to just use native apps. So here's the calendar. You can snap it to the right. You see we get like a way better uh, management of this window. Uh, I believe also the mail app is the same way. So let's open up mail, drag it to the bottom left. And yeah, you can see that basically we got four apps taking up the four corners of our screen and we can kind of, you know, manage our windows better. Now, obviously there's like a lot of different ways where you can like drag this. So if you drag it to like the bottom, it's gonna take up like this uh, smaller portion. Uh, if you drag this, not necessarily near the corner, but drag it like right over here, that's gonna take up like the whole bottom. And basically if you go back to like the menu bar for magnet, you can basically see all the different areas of how you can snap these windows together. But yeah, that's basically just a better uh, window management system on Mac OS and a faster uh, window management system for Mac OS that's better than the, you know, hovering your mouse pointer over the screen dot. All right, but those are my first things to do on your new 14 inch MacBook Pro. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it was a fun combination of setting changes and customization to Mac OS to make it, you know, more fun and more productive for you. So if you found this video helpful, please give me a like. If you wanna see more from the channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.